Hey guys, uh, so in the last video we talked about fleeting notes and if you haven't seen the video, uh, the link is in the description below. Uh, in this video we'll talk about literature notes and there are two ways that I'll show you how I'm putting in uh, literature notes. One is uh, from fleeting notes and the other is from the source document itself. So, um, <clears throat> so yesterday I was uh, rereading um, Cicero's book but uh, in audio form and I just put it into Apple Notes here and uh, I well I didn't put in the title so let's get the title I remember it's how to grow all oh, no, there it is okay so we'll copy uh, this in and then we'll plug this into Rome research there we go and then we'll use the metadata that was previously created as a template and then shift click to get the sidebar up and then we'll copy uh, all of this and then we'll put this back here uh, and for author put in Cicero and then tags will add uh, literature notes and then We'll load up the notes document. So uh, one of the principles for literature notes is that you should be very selective uh, about um, the notes that you're putting in. These are things that you want to sort of try to uh, remember um, for uh, future reference and um, and uh, things that you don't want to forget. Uh, so uh, as you'll see here it says like keep it short be extremely selective use your own words um, so the way that i like to use it is it really for me it really depends on how much sort of knowledge i have on the subject uh, i feel like generally the more knowledge i have on a subject then the more succinct i can be and more concise but the less i know about it then the more i want to write uh, and the more I want to try and uh, remember. So I feel like the the amount that you write will generally start to go down the more you start to know about a subject just because you've accumulated so much knowledge on it that there's uh, less and less new things for you to learn. So uh, in this, what we see here, the soul is a heavenly thing. Pythagoras believed that our soul is alive from a function. Okay, so maybe I'm not going to take all of these things. Uh, so maybe I'll take um, take it at the sort of top, which is that, um, and this is something that Cicero believed too, which is that uh, Pythagoras believed that our soul derived from from a divine universal intelligence, and then we can put that below here. Um, that this is um, human function lives to have remarkable memory of the past. Okay, so the reason why he thinks this is is because we have have a remarkable memory of the past and knowledge of things to come, uh, which is concept which is a concept known as metempsychosis. Uh, okay, and it's also, another word for it is also um, uh, transmigration, and uh, it's explored quite a bit by Plato as well. Uh, and here we see our knowledge of many things existed before uh, we were born, as the way children can quickly study and master difficult subjects, as if they already knew. So. And so another one here is um, okay, quick on master difficult subjects. So the way children master difficult subjects as if they're recalling what they already knew. Okay, and uh, the other things that we can relate this to is Jung's idea of the collective unconscious, where uh, he 
um, where he believes that uh, there exists a second psychic system of a collective, universal, and impersonal nature, which is identical to all the individuals, and so forth. So this is a useful sort of uh, tag to add there. Okay, now let's move on to the next source document, uh, which is uh, this piece on critical thinking uh, by Daniel Willingham. Uh, so I've already created this one, which is here. Uh, so you'll see that I've copied the URL here, I put in the name of the author, and then I've tagged it uh, Literature Notes. Uh, and I've written already here that critical thinking is the result of deep domain knowledge and practice. Uh, but I think I might actually get rid of this. And um, so I haven't actually read the paper yet. I wanted to go through this uh, live with you. Uh, and what I generally like to do first is I like to skim the um, subtitles and see uh, what sort of the overarching um, uh, arguments are and how they've sort of structured that uh, information. And I would do the same thing with uh, books as well. So uh, let me just load up um, the other book to tell you what I mean. So in this case, so this is uh, the stop principle on Kindle, uh, and this is what I went through in the last video on uh, fleeting notes. And uh, this is, I really like the way that uh, Richard's structured this book because uh, it's very easy to sort of get a handle on um, the arguments that he's trying to make and uh, the ideas that he wants to get across. And then he's also even got a summary chapter where he very succinctly uh, summarizes the entire book for you. So if you were reading this book, then you would have a great shortcut to uh, getting the uh, big idea to grasping what he's trying to say uh, very quickly. So that's kind of what I'm trying to do here when I'm uh, going through the sort of uh, the subtitles and um, uh, and uh, and also thinking carefully about so the name of the paper is critical thinking. Why is it so hard to teach? So this is presupposing that uh, critical thinking is actually hard to teach, and uh, you'll see that uh, in his uh, his I've started looking at some of his other other articles as well, and um, the the main thrust of sort of this argument is. Um, is that it's is that we assume that critical thinking is a skill uh, that can be sort of widely transferred, um, uh, so that uh, if you learn to ride a bicycle, then like other skills, once you learn it, you can apply it to any uh, situation. But in this case, he's saying that research is showing that um, that thinking is actually not that kind of skill, and that it's actually um, restricted to one domain. So that's what he refers here to as domain knowledge. Uh, so, um, so I think that what I would do is I would actually rephrase this to being um, critical thinking uh, is, not, is not a transferable skill. And uh, that it's actually the, the processes of thinking is specific to a domain. And uh, let's see if there is another section that I remember glancing over. Okay, so, so domain, the th process of thinking is specific to a domain and domain practice. So, I'm put it to a specific to a domain, domain practice. Okay, so this this is kind of, so you, I can, you can use a separate page um, for, for this. You'll see that in the last note that I didn't um, create a separate page, it's completely up to you how you want to do it and how you think uh, it would work better for you. 
In this case, I felt like having it there, but I could have actually just put it here instead as well. And then, uh, then I can just have uh, another argument here, or I can just put it here. So if I put it here, then it would basically be like, uh, let's go back like this. And then I can put another argument here or not. So, uh, so then um, I can also sort of link this to um, other sort of uh, things on thinking. So thinking on paper, thinking questions. Uh, in this case, I would um, thinking, critical thinking is not. So maybe I'll relate that to thinking on paper because we want to, when we're uh, writing notes and uh, taking notes from um, books, we want to practice uh, a, uh, an ability to think critically about the information that we're reading. And so that means that actually, um, if we're developing this skill specific to a reading, then our ability to think critically when it comes to note-taking may not uh, transfer to um, other areas. Okay, so I hope you've uh, enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.